Good morning. Good morning, Tina, Randy, Deacon Ross, Deacon Taylor, good morning. If you're listening by phone, do not unmute your phone. Just leave it where it is. Katrina, good morning. Tina, hello. Teju, good morning. Praying for you and your family. Ms. Brown, good morning. Ms. Sherry, good morning. Renee, good morning. Ms. Kiki, good morning. Ms. Amir, good morning. Akiba, good morning. Mary Snow, good morning. Mama Betty, good morning. Good morning, Brother Lima. Bless you, man. Hope you and your family are doing well. But Willie Moore, good morning. Miss Amadors, good morning. Bless you, bro. Safe travel to you, man. Love you, Newt. Tabitha, good morning. Good morning, Miss Renee. Miss Betty, good morning. Miss Sutton, good morning. Come on in. Cousin Stephanie, good morning. Missy Lois, good morning. Deasia, good morning. Angie, good morning. Good morning. Tisha, good morning. Come on in. Miss Belinda, good morning. Miss Thelma Stewart, good morning. Listen, I hope everybody had a uh, awesome Saturday. And here we are blessed again to see another Sunday. This is my first official Sunday back after being in Facebook jail, ain't God good? Thank y'all for the, for your prayers and uh, thank you for your concerns. Uh, hopefully, prayerfully, that won't happen again. But you know, people are just mean and evil for for whatever reason. But God always has a way to get His word through. Good morning, Doctor Gaines, uh, Tammy. Good morning, Dorothy. Good morning, John Evans. Good morning. And uh, we are just excited that you all chose to be a part of this uh, service this morning. To those of you that are members of First Baptist, I want to encourage you. Uh, we are working behind the scene to, uh, to hopefully and prayerfully get back into the congregation soon. Uh, thank y'all for your patience. Uh, we are yet trying to figure things out and uh, we want to do it and do it right. So uh, we ask that you please remain patient. 
And, uh, and when the Lord says move, we'll be ready to move. Uh, good morning, uh, Miss Nikki. Good morning, Brittany. Uh, we don't want to move too fast, uh, but we do want to uh, get back into the sanctuary. Uh, good morning, Miss Browning. And let me say this while they're coming in. Uh, uh, for some reason, some people feel like that, um, you know, I don't want to be in the sanctuary. Listen, there's no other place I'd rather be on Sunday morning than in the sanctuary with the saints of God. But when I stood before you all uh, now almost eight years ago, I made a vow to the Lord that I would lead his people and I would take care of his people. And I'm doing what I feel is in the best interest of the church and, to, and the people of God. Uh, I don't want people to get sick. Uh, I don't want people to, to, to go through things that, that we can't avoid. Um, so uh, as I continue to navigate through this pandemic, I ask that you continue to pray for me, that I continue to lead you and lead you in the right way. So uh, with that being said, we're gonna go ahead and get started and uh, uh, prayerful and hopefully uh, this word today will be of a blessing to you. This is an old song, bro, bro Wayne, good morning. Uh, Y'all know I sang old, old stuff. Uh, and it's just and it's just a, a course of a song that that I just want to say say a couple of times, and maybe it'll, it'll be a blessing to you as it has been to me this morning. Leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. Leave it alone, oh, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can, leave it alone. Y'all ought to type that this morning, tell somebody. Leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone, leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. Leave it alone, oh, leave it alone, y'all, leave it alone. Leave it alone, y'all. Leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. Leave it alone. One more time. Leave it alone. Leave it alone. Leave it alone, Lord. Leave it alone. God can handle it better than you can. Leave it alone. Well, let me just transition here. Well, down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, I know the Lord been good to me. Oh, down through the years, I know the Lord been good to me. And he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Down through the years, God's been good to me. Oh, down through the years, and I know the Lord been good to me. Oh, down through the years. I know the Lord been good to me. 
and he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Here's my favorite part. All of my life, God's been good to me. Come on, somebody. Oh, all of my life. I know the Lord being good to me oh, all of my life. I know the Lord being good to me and he's been better, better to me than I've been to myself. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Oh, hold to his hand, to my God's unchanging hand. You ought to build your hopes on things eternal. And hold to God's unchanging hand. Father, we come this morning thanking you for all your many blessings. God, we thank you that down through the years you have been so good to us. God, you've been you blessed us all of our lives. And this morning we say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for another day's journey. Thank you for another Sunday morning you have given to us. God, we bless you not because of what you do, but we bless you this morning, God, just for who you are. God, that even in our times of need, in our times of tr trouble, in our times of struggle, whatever our situation may be, we thank you this morning that you are an, an ever-present help. God, we pray this morning for all of those this morning, God, who will stand in need of prayer. We pray, God, your hands upon them, God. We pray, God, again for the Weathers family, God, as they continue to mourn the loss of their patriarch and their family, God, just ask that you continue to keep your arms around them. Um, just continue to hold them in the hollow of your hand. Not only them, but my family. I pray, God, for uh, brother, our brother and my cousin, Lamar Man, his children, Gerald and, and Pops and Keita and Chico. God, that you would keep your arms around them and the grandchildren. His brother and sister, God, his, his uh, entire family, God, just bless us in an awesome way, God. Not only my family, but every family that stands in need of prayer. And God, we pray this morning as we now prepare to preach your word. I pray, God, you will hide markers behind the cross that people may see you and not me. And I pray, God, that they hear you and not me, God. And I pray, God, let us, that you will let us have an awesome time this morning in your word. And I pray, God, that you would just bless every listener, God, that's tuned in, whether by phone or whether by Facebook or Zoom. God, we just pray, God, that your word will fall on good soil, God, and that it will bring forth the harvest. God, continue to teach us to not just be hearers, but to be doers as well. Bless us now, God, as we spend our time together with you in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. Again, good morning, everybody. Good morning to those that are just coming in. And we are definitely have happy that you are here on this Sunday morning, amen. And we bless God for uh, his grace and for his divine mercy. Uh, we're gonna jump right into this word this morning. Happy this, uh, this morning to have my daughter at home. Her and her friend are here. Uh, they get to spend the latter part of their spring break with me. Uh, so uh, while they in the bed in there, I'm gonna wake them up with the word this morning. So we just thank God for them. And uh, I ask that you continue to, to stay prayerful. And uh, we'll continue to pray this morning for Pastor Weathers. Amen. That God will continue to work a miracle in his behalf. He's already working it. Amen. So we just going to leave it alone because God can handle it better than we can. Amen. For those of you that uh, uh, have your Bible with you or your phone or however we do it, uh, the book of Colossians chapter one, verse 17 and verse 18, uh, uh, Colossians chapter one, verse 17 and verse 18. Again, good morning to those just coming in. And it says, and he is, and he is before all things 
and by him all things consist. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have preeminence. Amen. So read it the word of the Lord. So I want to talk this morning from the subject, when God makes life click. Amen. When God makes life clicks. Amen. When he make it click. Amen. Come on, somebody. Uh, I'm sure at some point in our life, we have all purchased a product and then find out that we couldn't get it to work. Amen. I know we've all been there. We've all been there. It's, it, whether it's been a big screen TV we bought, we assembled it, put it all together, but then couldn't get it to work. We, we've been there before. It's, it may be the new cell phone that you purchased with all the bells and whistles, but you never could figure out how to get it to work. We all know the feeling when, when we've opened packages and found plastic containers filled with screws and bolts, but even though we looked at the picture, we still couldn't figure out where uh, they fit in or what they were supposed to do. Come on, somebody. When do you know that things are not working? Well, you know things are not working when you go to the dealership for uh, a minor issue with your vehicle and you got to pay for it on the layaway plan. Y'all ain't talking to me here. You know things are not working right in your house when it's hot, but you got to use a box fan to cool off. Y'all ain't talking to me. We, we get frustrated, my brothers and sisters, when things don't work. And that there's a reason behind the madness. A cell phone, no matter, watch this, it's going to make sense to you. A cell phone, no, no matter how expensive uh, it, it won't work without a sim card y'all missing me it, it won't work unless you have minutes on it. it it won't work unless you have a data plan or wi-fi the, the, the phone is just not gonna work come on talk to me uh uh uh, 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 uh a car will not run unless it has gas y'all ain't talking to me an air conditioner won't cool unless it has freon a bicycle won't roll unless it has wheels. Y'all talk to me. You, you can't make a cheeseburger without cheese. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. If something doesn't work, there is usually something that's missing. Y'all ain't talking to me. As long as something is missing or out of place, it won't work. Do I have a witness here? Sometimes it takes us a while to get the fact that something is missing. Uh, let's consider this young boy who, uh, who inherited 500 acres of, of prime land, which he was told would be worth a fortune. This, this, this young city boy, he, he, he was excited that this land would make him rich. And he, he drove his Lexus uh, to the farm ready to collect on the money. He asked the neighbor what he needed to do to claim his fortune. He said, well, the neighbor said, well, sir, you need a plow. So this man, he, City boy, he went into the town and he bought a shiny new plow and set it in the field. He he washed that plow for several days and still nothing happened. Y'all ain't talking to me. He he went back to his neighbor and said, "Well, sir, I bought the plow like you said, but but nothing happened." The neighbor said, "Of course, you need some mules for the plow." And so the city boy he acquired some mules and hitched them to the plow as he spread out his handkerchief on on the ground and he sat there waiting to reap his fortune, but nothing happened. So the neighbor passed by and saw him sitting on the ground watching the plow and the mule and he started to laugh. He said, son, you, you're going about this the wrong way. You, you have 500 acres of, of rich farmland that, you, that could make you rich one day, but it ain't worth a dime to you if you don't put your hands to the plow. Somebody just missed that. What was missing was the young man's willingness to work. Do I have a witness here? Just as bread without yeast won't rise. A godly man's effort to make his plan work won't succeed unless God is in the plan. The Bible says in Matthew 6 and 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added unto you. If we, don't, if we want our best plan to work, we need to make sure that our plan is centered around God. Do I have a witness here? 
a songwriter penned the other day, without God, I couldn't do nothing. Without him, come on, Sister Amadors, I know you know it, I would fail. Without him, without God, my life would be rugged, just drifting, just like a ship without a sail. Yeah, my brothers and sisters, we know that we need the power of God to make our, to make our lives be what he intended for them to be. Whenever we're having trouble trying to make it work, there could be the possibility that we are trying to fit God, we're trying to make God fit into our plans rather than making our plans and rather than fitting ourselves into God's plan. I missed that, let me, let me go back and say it. When we, whenever we are having trouble making it work, there is a possibility, say it Marcus, that we are trying to make God fit into our plan rather than fitting ourselves into God's plan, that's it. Is there anybody on here know what I'm talking about? Yeah, we, we're too busy trying to, to make our plans, make plans and they don't include God. But I came today to tell you, if you don't include God in your plans, it will not work. Do I have a witness here? The text this morning uh, focuses on a man by the name of Paul. As Paul reminds the Colossians, watch this, that God should be the center of everything that they do. Oh, that's a word for somebody. First Baptist, do you hear what he's saying? Paul reminded the church of Coloss that Jesus, that God should be in the center of everything that they do. Matthew Henry says Paul had three reasons for writing Colossians. First, he sought to show them the, the, the divinity and the authority of Christ in the face of discord in the church. Y'all ain't talking to me. Secondly, he wanted to lead believers into spiritual maturity. Come on, somebody. And thirdly, he wanted to inform them about his state of affairs and ask for their prayers on his behalf. Y'all ain't talking to me. Paul raised up Christ as the source of a believer's life. He, we, we, Paul wanted to, them to know we, can, we do nothing without him and everything we do should be centered around him in some way. Maybe this is the message he gave in Acts chapter 17, verse 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Y'all ain't talking to me. But look look at verse 17. In verse 17, look at the latter part. It said, by him all things consist. I got to work this for a minute. It, it was Paul's way of telling the Colossians that God is the center of everything. He makes things happen. He, at the end of that sentence it is the word consist. Stay with me, y'all see it. Consist means to include. It means to incorporate. It, it means to contain. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. This is one of the few occasions we see the word consist stand by itself. Usually it is followed by something such as consist of or consist in or consist as y'all gonna get it in a minute when it's followed by something consists usually indicates parts that makes a whole are y'all feeling me when it stands alone by the way paul writes it in this text watch this it indicates that the parts exist because of the whole y'all gonna get it put it another way the little things only make sense when they are part of the big things, y'all ain't talking to me. What are you saying, man? Let me back. Can I just put it in layman terms? The stern wheel of a car makes sense only because we know it's part of a car. Without the car, Lord have mercy, the stern wheel, <laughs> the stern wheel by itself makes no sense. Y'all missing me here. Paul said it simply. When God is mixed in everything, Lord have mercy, life makes better sense because we see how our lives, Lord have mercy, is a part of his divine plan. Do I have a witness in here? Yeah, yeah, we, we when we make plans, I'm almost done, y'all. When, when we make plans, there are a few things we need to make them work. Do I have any witnesses here? They all resolve around the word consist. What do you mean? Okay, point number one, somebody type it in. Ungodly plans don't work for godly people. Somebody type that in.
ungodly plans don't work for ungodly people. There's a strange irony here of the spiritual life. Y'all stay with me. An ungodly person can make an ungodly plan and it'll work for a while. <clears throat> However, a godly person who tries to make an ungodly plan will fail every time. <clears throat> Excuse me. Y'all miss me. A thief can make plans to steal money and get away with it for a while. A godly man who makes the same plan will find everything going wrong. Even if he doesn't get caught stealing, y'all missing me. The godly man knows that his plans, his plan must have God's blessing, watch this, and consist or include the will of God. Godly people operate within the will of God. That's how we function. We, we get in the will of God. How many folks out there know that there's a danger when you step outside of the will of God? I know for firsthand, I, I've had five knee surgeries that reminded me that I need to stay in God's will. But back to the text, back to the text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Godly people operate within the will of God. Watch this. If you own a restaurant, it's a godly restaurant. Y'all talk to me. Yeah, our, our clothing store is a godly store. That's how we operate, those of us in the body of Christ. Our home is a godly home. Our school is a godly school. If, if God is not the center of our plan, it won't work for us. Being, in, being at the center is crucial. Y'all stay with me. Many people will buy uh, a new house. They'll buy a new house. Watch this put a cross on the wall, y'all ain't talking to me, or put, put a picture of Jesus on the mantle, but they drink, they gamble, they have adulterous affairs in the same house. They may have the house, but it would never become a home until, until God comes off the wall and comes off the mantle and becomes a guiding force within the family. I just preached to somebody. For children of God, we begin with what is right and we build our lives around it. I, I understand now, uh, growing up in the house with grandmama, grandmama had Jesus on the altars of her heart. Grandmama didn't have a problem telling us what thus said the Lord. Grandma never had a problem praying for us. She never had a problem laying her hands on us. Y'all ain't talking to me because grandmama realized that the center of her home, amen, consists of, of being godly. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, they're, they're point number one, ungodly plans don't work for godly people. Point number two, our plans, watch this, must have a godly consistency. Do y'all hear me? A God, our God, our plans, let me slow down, our plans must have a godly consistency. Those, watch this, who bake. Hey, Miss Sherry, those who bake that <laughs> know that flour eggs, seasoning, and uh, 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 the liquids uh, are necessary. Y'all ain't talking to me. However, the consistency of what is mixed depends on whether you want the final product to be chewy, soft, or mealy like cornbread. Y'all ain't talking to me. Consistency when baking refers to how the mixture holds together. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? Consistency is its thickness and firmness. Paul told the Colossians that by him or by Christ, our lives have consistency. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? He is the mixture that holds us. Mm -hmm. That holds us together. I, I hope y'all feeling this. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he, he is what makes us firm. Uh, yo, Lord have mercy. If, if you bake a cake and it doesn't come out tasty, watch this. Oh, this is your shout, Lord have mercy. I might take off running. Y all, y all, if you bake a cake and it doesn't come out tasty, the problem is not in the stove. The problem is in the bowl. It's in the mixing. Y'all ain't talking to me here. If you put a lot of sugar in, you can expect it to be sweet. If you put a lot of meal in, 
you can expect it to be graining. Y'all ain't talking to me. If we put a lot of God in our mix, Lord have mercy, you can expect the life that is full of the fruit of the spirit. Galatians 5, uh, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. Y'all missing me here. With plenty of the fruit of the spirit, our lives have consistency. Lord have mercy, y'all ain't missing me. If we can't get things to work, check the bowl and not the stove. Priest markers, man, are oh, y'all getting this? Uh, point number three, I'm almost out of here. Uh, when our lives are consistent, point number three, when our lives are consistent, that means they click. Y'all ain't talk talking to me. When our lives are consistent, that means they click, C-L-I-C-K, y'all missing me. Look at Colossians 1 and 17 again. It says, by him, things consist. Consist also means to fit or click, C-L-I-C-K, y'all gonna get it? So if you read the verse again, it says, by him, all things click, y'all missing me. When things click, they make sense and we better understand. Are y'all getting me? Lord have mercy. Uh, when things click, we're able to see the big picture. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, yeah. A, a key makes sense when I can see the big picture and know which door it opens. Uh, the number, the numbers on the face of a watch, Lord have mercy, makes little sense until we understand they are pointing to 60 minutes in an hour or 60 seconds in a minute. Y'all ain't gonna catch it. When things click, come on somebody, you are able to connect the dots and understand the relationship between what you learn in school and what you need in life. Oh, have mercy, somebody type it. When things click, you understand the mysteries of things. Y'all ain't talking to me. When things fit, they, they, they all come together at the right time in the right order. Come on, somebody type it in. Yeah, yeah, when things click, that, that's the beauty of the believer's life. God makes everything click for us, watch this, at the right time. It, it, it's, like, it's like opening a combination lock. Y'all remember them, that there's a certain number of turns to the left, to the right, uh, but at the right time, following God's direction, we hear a click, and that which was locked has been unlocked. Preach, Marcus, man. Uh, only Christ, watch this, makes our lives have meaning and purpose. We can do many things, but nothing really click until we see how they fit into the will of God. Do I have a witness here? I I'm leaving you here. Uh, I'm, I'm out. Thank y'all so much for joining me this morning. I appreciate y'all coming in. I'm about to close it and y'all let y'all enjoy your Sunday. Uh, my brothers and sisters, we must remember that Christ is the center of our being. Yeah, we must remember my brothers and sisters, he makes it click for us. Yeah, Paul not only told the Colossians, watch this, that through Christ all things consist, but he told them how God made that happen. Do I have a witness here? Yeah, in Colossians uh, chapter one, verse 19, it says, it pleased the Father. Lord have mercy, that Christ would come to the earth and show the world how to reconcile sin and salvation and make them click, Lord have mercy. In verse 20, the text says, Christ made peace through the blood of his cross. Mm, I hope y'all see we heading towards, uh, heading towards Easter uh, and brought the jangling ends of condemnation and forgiveness and made them click. In the same sense, those who trust uh, in the Lord knows that he takes the jangling discords uh, the jangling discords of our lives and combines them with his grace and mercy and make 
things click. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. Things may break down, but when God gets in the picture, our efforts to fix them begin to click. Y'all gonna get it in a minute. Uh, things, Lord have mercy, may go wrong, but when God gets in the picture, our efforts to make them, make, make them right uh, begin to click. We may have fallen down, but when God gets in the picture, our efforts to stand on our feet again begins to click. Have I got a witness here? When things begin to click, God opens closed doors. Lord have mercy. When things begin to click, he makes opportunities available to us. I'm preaching here. When things begin to click, uh, he baffled all of our critics and our enemies. Lord have mercy. Who doubts our abilities. Have I got a witness here? When things began to click, Lord have mercy, he baffled the mind of our, of our skeptics who thought that it was over for us. Have I got a witness here? How can we put it together again? Yes, how can we make things work? Lord have mercy, is it possible to make things click? Yeah, that's the same question. I'm leaving you here. That's the same set of questions he asked Ezekiel when he placed him in the valley of dry bones. I'm closing here. He asked him the question, son of man, yeah, can these bones live? Yeah, God says even the driest bones, watch this, can live again when they hear the word of the Lord. Have I got a witness here? After a while and by and by, yeah, there was a clicking in the valley. Have I got a witness here? Let me walk this text here. The toe bone found the foot bone. There was some clicking going on. Have I got a witness here? The foot bone found the ankle bone. There was some clicking going on. Y'all going to see it in a minute. The ankle bone found the leg bone. Have I got a witness here? Girl, there was clicking going on. The leg bone found the knee bone. Yes, there were click there was clicking going on. Ain't God all right today? The knee bone found the thigh bone. Y'all missing me here. There was some clicking going on. The thigh bone connected the backbone. Yes, y'all see it. There's some clicking going on. Well, the backbone connected to the shoulder bone. Yeah, y'all seeing it. There was some clicking going on. Well, the shoulder bone connected to the neck bone. Yes, there was some clicking going on. The neck bone connected to the head bone. Y'all ain't talking to me. There was some clicking uh, going on. Uh, have I got a witness here? Uh, you can't make it click. Uh, yeah, uh, but when God gets ready, uh, he can make things happen. Uh, can I get a witness here? Uh, look at Ezekiel. Uh, yes, uh, look at in the valley of dry bone. Uh, this, these bones stood up uh, like a mighty army. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, Ezekiel said, uh, look at here. Uh, the bones are here, uh, but they need the word. Uh, he summons the wind uh, and they blew into him uh, the word of God. Uh, and that's when uh, those bones uh, became a living soul. Uh, can, can I get a witness? Huh? You can't make it click. Huh? But when God huh, gets in the picture, huh, have I got a witness here? Huh? He make things huh, come alive. Huh? He make things huh, 
change uh, for your situation. Uh, he can take hate uh, and turn it into love. Uh, he can take pain uh, and turn it into gain. Uh, he can take defeat, preach Mark of man, uh, and turn it into victory. Uh, ain't gone all right. Uh, I can hear uh, God saying, uh, yeah, uh, having a conversation uh, with his son. Yeah, he said, son, uh, my people are in trouble. Uh, they're trying uh, to get forgiveness uh, by slaughtering a lamb, uh, by killing a cattle. Uh, will you show them the way? Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, look at God. Uh, he prepared himself a body. Uh, he came uh, through 42 generations. Uh, and can you see the 42 generations? Uh, how things uh, begin to click together. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, he came uh, through 42 generations. Uh, he got off uh, in a town called Bethlehem, uh, born uh, in a manger. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, walked this earth uh, for 33 and a half years. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, he died uh, on an old rugged cross. Uh, Y'all miss me. Uh, he was born in a manger. Uh, he died, got clicking it together uh, on an old rugged cross. Uh, he was buried uh, in a bar of tomb. Uh, he died. Uh, Lord have mercy. Let me back up. Uh, he was born. Uh, he died. Uh, he rose uh, with all power uh, in his hand. Uh, I heard uh, the songwriter say uh, because he lived I can face my tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone because he lives. He's still making salvation click for you. Can I get a witness here? Because he lives. He's still making life click for you. Have I got a witness here? You ought to thank God today that God still makes makes it click Y'all ain't feeling me here. You ought to thank God today uh, that God uh, still make things click. Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, thank you, Grandmama. Uh, Y'all hear me talk about it a lot. Uh, but me and Grandmama uh, had a lot of conversations. Uh, and Grandmama uh, reminded me uh, that if I don't keep God first, uh, I won't make it uh, in this thing called life. Uh, thank you, Grandmama. Uh, because of you, I put God first. Ain't he all right? And look at me. I might not be what folk thought I was going to be. But I thank God I am who I am. And who I am is a child of the living God. Can I get a witness here? Do I have anybody on this live this morning? Whether you're on the phone or whether you're listening through Facebook Live. Uh, can you thank God today uh, that you might not be uh, what you ought to be, uh, what you used to be, rather, uh, but thank God uh, you are who you are. Uh, come on, testify uh, and tell somebody, uh, I am uh, who I am. Uh, I'm delivered. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, I'm bought with a price. Uh, I am redeemed. Uh, I'm a child of the king. Uh, I'm an heir. Uh, I'm the head. Uh, I'm not the tail. Uh, I'm above. Uh, I'm not beneath. Uh, I'm blessed in the city. Uh, I'm blessed in the field. Uh, I'm blessed going out. Uh, I'm blessed coming in. Uh, I I am uh, who I am. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, Lord have mercy. Uh, I'm saved. Uh, ain't God good? Uh, ain't it amazing uh, how God uh, can make all things click together? Uh, ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? He can do it. He can make it all click. He can take your past your present and your future and click it all together. Do I have a witness here? Paul reminding us today 
even in this pandemic, that God is the center of all things. Be, be mindful that outside of God's will, you won't make it. I'm a witness to that. When I stepped outside of God's will to go back and play ball, that was the, I'm not gonna say it's the worst mistake I made, but it was a learning experience that I must stay in the will of God. The safest place, somebody type it, the safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. I know that's long, but somebody needs to type that. The safest place in the whole wide world is in the will of God. Richard Smallwood wrote a song that says, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. When I lost my direction, you're the compass for my way. You're the fire and night when nights are long and cold. In sadness, you are the laughter that shadows all my fears when I'm all alone. Your hand is there to hold. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. I wish I had my voice. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Lord have mercy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams, the voices of the children, my family and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dream. Oh, come on, somebody say it, Jesus. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. Hope for all I do. Come on, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Come on, Jesus, you are the center of my joy. Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Father, thank you for being the center of our joy. Thank you for reminding us in this word today that we must keep you as the center in all things that we do. Forgive us for those times we stepped outside of your will. Forgive us for those times, God, that we did things without even consulting your advice or your wisdom. And God, thank you for reminding us today, it's you that make all things click. And God, we thank you today for this word and for your spirit. I pray God your blessing upon every person on this live feed today. And God, I just pray, God, that you would just bless them now in an awesome, awesome way. It's in Jesus' name we pray and we thank you. Amen. Listen, thank y'all so much for jumping in real quick on this Sunday morning. Thank y'all for tuning in. Uh, those of you that are by phone, uh, I need you all to do me a favor, as well as those that are listening. 
Uh, if you will type in the names and those of you that's on by phone, you can text me, type in the names of those uh, that uh, you, you want to lift in prayer. I'll be praying uh, this afternoon. God has placed it on my heart to just pray for, for pray for the people. So if you will, uh, just type in names uh, on this live. And those of you that listen by phone can send me a text message uh, of those uh, that you want to lift in prayer on today. I will be praying this afternoon uh, for, our, for the people. Uh, so uh, if you want to lift them up in prayer, uh, please send their names. Thank y'all so much for joining in. I love y'all. Listen, continue to wear your mask. Continue to practice social distancing. Co continue to watch your crowd. If you haven't got the vaccine, please get it. Uh, it's, 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 uh, it's, it's really a necessity. Uh, we just found, uh, they just announced the other day that uh, the new strand of the virus has now hit Mississippi. Don't play with your life. Don't play with your life and don't don't play with your life to the point of where you can prevent some things and you get sick and then you call the pastor and want the pastor to pray for you. I'm already praying for you that you get that vaccine, first of all, but I'm praying that you will be smart in all that you do. All right. So listen, uh, again, send those names in and I definitely will be praying for them on today. I love y'all. Thank y'all so much for tuning in. And may the peace of God guide you and lead you. And I pray you have an awesome week. I love y'all much. Take care.